Hi. Yes, I kind of look like Foo. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to take a look at today is a do-it-yourself pick and place machine from a company called lightplacer.com. They've even kindly written it on the side of the box here. Uh, well, it's pretty much a one-man band. Uh, Juha Kusama, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sure I'm not. Anyway, he's on the EV blog uh, forum, and he's uh, he has his own company selling like high-end audio uh, products and things like that but he decided to um, quite some time back to do his own do-it-yourself pick and place machine as quite a lot of people are doing but now he's uh, releasing or it's already for sale I think a kit for a um, 1300 US dollar pick and place machine so I thought we'd do an unboxing of it can't build it here unfortunately that'll be have to be a whole separate video and then not only building the thing but then also using it as well so thank you very much for sending this in it's awesome um always wanted to sort of play around with a do-it-yourself pick and place machine but i'm you know i've i've been quite outspoken about the value of pick and place machines they i i think they still um have a very niche window of uh usability you have to sort of you know have just the right type of boards that you want to assemble with the right number of parts and the right volume otherwise you know, you're often either better, if you've only got like one board, for example, you need to assemble with, you know, 30 parts on it or something, well, then just do it by hand. There's, you spend too much time setting up and dicking around with your pick and place machine, you might as well just do it by hand. It's actually quite quick. But if you've got a board or a panel that's got, you know, 500 parts on it, well, you know, doing it by hand might be a bit tough and your solder paste might uh, dry out or something like that by the time you get around to placing all your parts. So, hey, it might be worthwhile to set up your pick and place machine to do it. And But if you're doing a run of 20 panels or something, your bottleneck's going to be your workflow, uh, not just the pick and place, but your workflow in terms of your um, oven and pasting it. And you can't just go paste all your 20 panels and then put them through your pick and place machine because then all your solder paste would dry out. No, oh, it's all a workflow thing. You're better off just shipping them off to your local assembly house to do it. So anyway, um, it's going to be really interesting to look at a do-it-yourself pick and place machine. Are they usable? And, uh, you know, do they do a reasonable job for the money. Well, we won't know unless we build it up and do some practical examples. So there'll be follow on videos for this. This will just be unboxing because, well, it's quite exciting. Look at this. Looks like a big Toblerone bar. Hmm, yum. Anyway, um, this one can do, uh, so he claims down to like 0402 parts. It's got vision uh, placement as well, just some USB webcams and stuff like that, but that's great. And it basically just, uh, I believe there's no base in here either. You've got it like, you make your own base and you just screw down all the um, all the XY uh, stuff like that. So all the um, chassis is basically in here and it's just like a, a, um, a, you know, a frame with all the linear uh, motors and stuff like that. So, and well, Let's take it apart and see what's in here. So as I said, uh, 1300 US dollars, about 1200 euros or thereabouts. And uh, you get the full kit, although you don't get everything. There's like, you get most of the stuff, you get the cameras and all the motors and all the, you know, everything else. But I don't think you get some of the guides and, and things like that. Anyway, um, they're all individually cardboard wrapped. That's good. And it's, uh, all got to me intact by the looks of it, so if I can make it all the way, oh, he's in Finland, by the way, so if we can make it all the way from Finland to Australia, it's about as far as you can get, then uh, I think we're doing pretty good. That's it, that's all that's in there, so these will be all your, uh, uh, there, there's a maker slide, yep, so these are all the, all the slides that we've got, and let's take a look inside the box. See what else we've got. I might have to, yeah, I might have to flip this around. And it, these things aren't particularly fast. Well, this one's not particularly fast. Most do-it-yourself ones I've seen are not fast. They're like, this one is claimed uh, between 200 and 400 components per hour. So, you know, it's definitely not professional level. Oh, no, definitely not professional level pick and place 
Machine, how do you bloody well open this thing? But the big thing that makes a pick and place machine really usable, of course, is the feeders. And no, this one does not have any feeders, doesn't support anything, so you can't use your existing reels. You just have to cut them out and just lie them, stick them down on the table, and like anywhere on the table, and then the uh, camera comes across, finds them, boop, picks them up, and stuff like that. So the closer you put your strips to your strips of components to your board, the less that uh, the uh, head has to travel each time and you know hence why you know, 200 to 400 components per hour which is not a particularly fast pick and place machine here we go there we go here's from uh, Tempair in uh, Finland thank you very much uh, uh, Juha he's uh, Juku on the EEV blog um, forum so oh, love these Jeez, you can really pop these oh, yeah. All right, I'll spare you the uh, uh, unboxing of the rest of it, but oh, look at this, look at this, box of goodness, everything is individually labelled, M510 low head, um, screw it, look at this, spacers, we've got micro switches, um, there, big ass ones, we've got ourselves a manual, um, uh, pick and place uh, tool, but maybe it uses the head from that. Maybe you have to, it uses the suction cup from that. That might be my, oh, it's got a label. This pen is not very useful, but the rubber cups are. Aha, uh -huh. so we're going to use the rubber cup for that. And uh, yeah, we've got all sorts of, wow, really gone to town. Good work on labeling M5s, everything. The uh, There's the little uh, belt pulleys for the linear rails and wow. Yay! Oh, look at those bearings! Fantastic! Oh, how many bearings have we got? A ton of them! This is fantastic! Well done! I like it! Oh man, don't lose any of it! And we've got linear bushings, slide bearing units. Oh man! Look, we've got some. Uh, are they custom? They might be uh, custom made angle brackets, springs. Spring! Awesome! Oh, man, I hope there's good instructions for assembling this. And guess who gets to assemble all this? I thought these cable snakes were uh, optional extra. Actually, I love these things. These are just oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're actually included or not. Don't quote me on that. Now, these are optional extras, apparently. I got a screwdriver, by the way, in the optional extra one. Awesome. Um, Torx. So, <laughs> fantastic. But uh, I don't know why sort of the post-assembly ext extrusion nuts and things would be optional extra. I don't quite get that. And I got a spatter. And we've got some motor porn for you motor aficionados. We've got uh, NEMA uh, 17XY. Uh, stepper motors here, there we go, for those uh, playing along at home with the uh, model numbers. Not sure what uh, brand that is. Anyway, um, this one is the rotation motor. It has to be uh, smaller, well, it can be smaller, so it is uh, smaller. OSM, is that the uh, manufacturer? Anyway, that's for the uh, rotation of the head. And then we've got our big worm drive. Look at that. Yeah, baby. And let me show you something really cool you can do with stepper motors. Just short all the leads together, so red to red, green to green, etc, etc. And we've got a smiley face there. If I turn this nice and slow, nothing's happening. But if you start to turn them fast, ta-da, it should actually track one for one. There you go. Beautiful. No, no magic, no external power supply. We're just obviously generating uh, voltage with our first stepper motor, which is enough to energize second stepper motor. And uh, the amount of, uh, you know, the speed it takes to get up to the um, actually turning the other one um, can determine how good a quality the motor is. <laughs> Neat. Woohoo! And as far as the camera vision system uh, goes, well, just <laughs> cheap as chips, USB um, endoscopes we can get on eBay for uh, next to nothing. So we actually get two of those. 
Uh, so there's going to be two cameras on the thing, and we've got some uh, lead rings as well. They look much bigger, so there must be some sort of mount to, uh, you know, plate to uh, mount all this uh, jazz on. But yeah, that's, you know, that's all you need these days. It's easy to add, like, vision, easy and cheap to add vision placement to a do-it-yourself pick-and-place machine these days. Wasn't the case, like, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And here is the rest of the mechanical goodness. We've got ourselves our, uh, our slides here. We've got... Uh, uh, two long ones, one short, well, uh, two really long ones, two shorter ones, and one really short one. So there you go, we've got ourselves our uh, extruded um, aluminium uh, T slot things there, and some Y axis tube. I got no idea how where that goes, but anyway, um, that's basically it. That's the unboxing for the uh, Light Placer, and, well, there's our address, lightplacer.com, if you want to check it out. So this was just an unboxing video. Sorry, I can't really do anything else um, exciting with it today. But uh, Dave, too, is going to build this up, or David, as he doesn't like being called Dave, does he? That's correct. You're right, right. It's got to be David. All right. So, yeah, he's going to uh, assemble this thing, and we can... Uh, do some future videos on it. That was just a relatively quick unboxing. Catch you next time.